Yeah. All right. Woohoo. Welcome, everyone. I hope everyone has got their celebration hats and energy in brought to this event. Um, my name is Valerie Lewis. I am the organizer of Tarot Unicorns and Coffee. We have the lovely astrologer Robin Poole with us today. And this is our recurring moon celebration event tonight i can't say tonight it is an evening event tonight we are celebrating the new moon in aries woo, woo. and a little bit about our events i'm going to go over the guidelines first we only have two guidelines real easy to remember the first guideline is love and light always for this in for the entirety of this event please hold yourself in love and light and please hold everyone else who is taking time out of their evening to join us in love and light as well. Y'all know what that means. Apply it as needed. The second, the second guideline is don't start no shit, won't be no shit. It means behave as an adult. Please don't be disruptive. Come on, y'all. Y'all know how to act. This is a celebration. I'm the only shit starter. I am allowed to start shit in my own events. I just want to put that out there. Maybe I should make that guideline number three. I don't know. Um, Oh my goodness, right? Please, we don't need to have a, but you know what? I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later, um, Kara. Kara, put some over in, in chat. Remind me, if I don't talk about that, remind me, because I do want to come back to that. Um, what was I gonna say? I went over the guidelines. Oh, how this event runs, because I see some new um, faces, some new names. So the way this event runs is we hand it off between Robin and myself. I explain new moon and Aries energies, and then Robin explains it. And then we have a portion that um, Robin will give rituals. It's, it's me, her, me, her. I'm going all out of order, y'all. Don't let me confuse you because I'm confused myself. Um, I will go over, okay, back up. We talk about the energy so you get a big overview of what is going on astrologically, what is going on with our moon, how these energies can affect us and how these energies can benefit us and guide us and work with us to have a more fulfilling spiritual journey. Then after we've talked about what those energies are and what's going on up in the skies, we want you all to have a way to not just know about it, but to pull those energies in and actually make use of them and feel those energies, incorporate those energies. And so then we go into a portion called rituals. I don't know, maybe we should rename that. Um, we still do rituals. We give you rituals, activities. I have more along the lines of activities tonight for you all to work with these energies. Doesn't matter what the hell you call it. It's a way to make these energies personal to yourself so that they can benefit you specifically on your path. Um, so that's how this event works. And I think now I've covered everything. And um, with that being said, uh, we like to come together and ground everyone very briefly just to make sure we're all settled in and all concentrating and focused on the good energies that are about to come forth from this event and so i'm going to turn it over to robin and let robin brown uh briefly ground us all okay well thank you guys all for coming i'm super excited about the energy of this moon i think it's really great i have kind of a wild ritual today i hope you guys will like it you can give me some feedback and let me know what you think but at the moment, I'm just gonna invite everyone to settle in to the energy of our, our event and our circle here. If you'd like, you can close your eyes. You can feel yourself taking a couple deep breaths, letting all the tension and worries of your day drop away. If there's any concerns or you think you might need your to-do list later, you can put them in a basket by your feet and pick them back up after the event, but for the moment, let's just say we're gonna take some time for ourselves. That's an Aries thing to do. I'm gonna take some time for myself to be together, to not think about everything we have to do, but to just get closer to ourselves, to our divine connection, to our higher self, to spirit, to each other, so that we can really enjoy living on this planet as our true selves, which is another super Aries thing to do. So if you want, you can feel your energy heading down into the earth and let any toxins or old emotions go that you don't need anymore. You can ground horizontally 
and see your energy going out to the trees or the rocks or the dirt in your, your uh, environment. Or you can center yourself in your heart and maybe send some energy up through the top of your head out to your divine connection or into the stars, into the constellation of Aries. If you're like, man, I need some help setting boundaries, loving myself, going out on my adventure, you know, living as, as my true authentic self in this life. Let's just take a moment to love on ourselves and say, self, I honor you. And I want to know what's really going on in there. I want to know who I really am. I want to stop burying parts of me or having parts of me that are disavowed or denied or orphans because I'm too scared to encounter them. I want to really know who I am and fan my gifts into flame in an appropriate and helpful way for me in my life. Take a couple deep breaths and just settle into the who am I and what am I doing on this planet? Aries energy. And take a moment and say thank you to any positive, supportive energies that are here to help us, our divine connection, our spirit guides, our own higher selves, the spirits of the houses or the property where we're, we're living or working as we're in part of this event. And we'll just say no thank you to any negative energies that are sniffing around. Feel free to kick out any energy that doesn't seem right to you. And I want to set our intention, which is that we will be supportive and open and ask the questions we need to ask, make the comments we want to make, get the support we need. And that when we leave here, we'll only be carrying the energy that is for our highest good. And we won't have any cords, we'll cut away any attractions or any feeling that we need to rescue each other in a way that's not healthy so that we can really leave feeling energized and supported and with great ideas for how to make use of this new moon energy. And I wanna say thank you to Valerie for scheduling and thank you to everybody who showed up. We'll take a couple more deep breaths and just relax into your own intention for today. Take a moment and ask, what do I wanna get out of this event? Aside from spending time with these lovely people and taking a break out from my day. Spirit, what can spirit give us that will really send us on our way? That's another Aries theme, going on your way. When you're ready, you can open your eyes and we will dive back in. Great, thank you. Thank you, Robin. Always better after those. <laughs> that was lovely, that was lovely. All right, you guys. Well, let's jump right in to the presentation. I will kick things off with our speaking about new moon energies and Aries energies. And one moment while I get my screen pulled up. It doesn't seem to be displaying. There we go. Perfect. All right. New moon in Aries. Oh, pay no attention to that typo. New moon energies. Let's talk about new moon energies. Just the new moon by itself, doesn't matter what sign it is. It's believed that as the that new moons are time for setting intentions, or you might call it planting seeds. It's that beginning stage of manifestations. And it's believed that as the moon grows, our intentions, our goals will grow too. Um, with the full realization or manifestation of those goals and intentions happening at the next full moon. So between this new moon and the full moon that happens a little bit later in April, again, let me just mention new moon happens on April 1st, not today. Um, so between the new moon that happens on April 1st and the full moon that happens later in April, it's believed that those intentions will grow to fruition during that period. However, there's also another way we can look at that. We can gauge it between our new moon and Aries working with these Aries energies until the next full moon that happens in Aries. So we can also spread that out over a longer period of time as we work specifically with Aries energies, saying that whatever I put in motion with this Aries new moon will come to fruition with the Aries full moon. 
that gives us a longer time frame if we have long-term goals that we want to accomplish that we don't think we're going to get accomplished within just two, two and a half weeks. So just a couple of ways to look at that. And just to note, uh, it's on the screen, but I will say it out loud, October 9th is when the Aries full moon happens. So if you have a long-term goal that you would like to accomplish between now and October, go ahead and use these Aries energies to get that going. My connection, okay, I feel like my connection is, is all over the place. It, it's good, okay, good. Thank you, Elizabeth. I can see the thumbs up. I can't see everybody, but I saw that. Okay, so let's talk about, so that was the new moon. Let's get into Aries energy. Just move some things around on my screen here so I can see my slides. And I lightly titled this event, Kissing Those Self-Defeating Habits Goodbye. Um, there's a lot of reasons why we went with that one, which, you, you will, which will become apparent as we get into more explaining Aries energies. But let's talk about intention setting, seed planting with Aries energies. I'm going to keep it real simple. Instead of choosing an intention outside of it and then trying to use Aries energies to make that intention come true, I'm going to just lump it all in the same box and say, let's set the intention that we use Aries energies in general to move our lives forward and to overcome these self-defeating habits. Or you can rephrase, we just talked about rephrasing, or you can also say, let's set the intention to approach each current situation in our lives with Aries energies. So just a couple of different ways, just some easy, basic level intention setting, make it easy for you because we got a lot going on. Okay, so back to the theme of kissing self-defeating habits goodbye. Burger or salad? I know y'all are looking at that screen saying, what the hell does that have to do with anything right now? I'm about to tell y'all, hang tight. Self-defeating habits. This is gonna apply to self-defeating habits, but it can apply to any spiritual inner work that we do. The idea is when I used to work in fast food, I got so annoyed with so many things in my corporate world and working for other people. And this might be a bone that I just need to pick right now. But when I used to work in fast food, my very first job was at McDonald's. And people, people thought we were Burger King. We weren't, but they would try it anyway. They would try to have it their way and they would try to order specialty. So they would take a burger. Let's just give you the example. They come in and they order a burger and you're behind the counter. And they say, but hold on, before you make that cheeseburger, can you take the cheese off? Because I, I don't react well to dairy. And take the meat off too, because I'm vegetarian. And you better take the bread off because I, I shouldn't really be doing that many carbs right now. And so you look at them and you're like, so, so all you want is like the lettuce and the pickles and, and the ketchup. Yeah, that's, I guess that's all I want. Why didn't you just order a salad? Why didn't you just order a salad? So the idea is sometimes we go into the spiritual work and we want to dig and pick apart and identify all of the things that are wrong with our self-defeating habits and where did they come from? And is it a past life? And let's pick this apart and let's figure out where it's coming from. And let's really work on changing the self-defeating habit. That's the burger. That's trying to take a burger and make it into a salad. You can do that. And sometimes it's very valuable to do it that way. Or you can just order the salad. And by ordering the salad, what I mean is, instead of working and identifying and trying to figure out those self-defeating habits and turning them into something else, how about we just leave those where they are and move into this energy that has no self-defeating habits? What energy would that be? Aries. It would be Aries energy. So how about we don't focus on the self-defeating habits and we just focus on how can I step into Aries energy? I'm trying to make it easy for y'all. I'm trying to make it easy. It's like cheat codes in the video game. So let's talk a little bit about Aries energy. First sign of the zodiac. So new start, magnified, supercharged. It's the new, new. It's a very... Um, 
new energy, great for new beginnings, and we have a new moon. So if ever this was a time for you to start something new, turn over a new leaf, now is the time. It's a cardinal sign, which means, again, it's one of the first signs of the Cardinal signs are the first signs in their grouping. So it's the first sign of the fire signs. It's a fire sign, which is probably why I'm so excited about Aries energy because I'm a fire sign and I get excited anytime we talk about the other zodiac fire signs. It feels like I'm talking about family. Um, Aries is ruled by the planet Mars. And Aries keywords could be that it is a time to act, leader, and passionate. Those are the three that I really like. Aries is about action. It's a fire sign, but it's about action. What's Aries about? Action. I want to say it one more time so y'all understand that this is not a time to sit and listen to this whole presentation that Robin and I, yes, Elizabeth, that Robin and I have put together and say, oh, that sounds really good. Maybe by next June, I'll incorporate something. No, Aries is about action doing something, not thinking about it, not talking about it, not planning it, doing the damn thing. I really want to drive that home because the energy is so optimal for starting and doing anything in your life right now. I think I said action enough times. I hope so. I hope it's burned into your brain right now. Let's talk a little bit more about Aries energy. Oh no, it's got a broken picture. Y'all, that picture was so pretty. It was so pretty. I don't know what happened, but I, but I can tell you what the picture was of. It was this. It was a picture of this, but I thought if I put it on the slide, y'all would be able to see it better. It's an Oracle card and I'm going to read from you straight from the book because it's such an excellent definition of Aries energy. So y'all know I love my Oracle and Tarot cards. And it says, the keyword is, I bet y'all can't guess. I bet y'all cannot guess the keyword. Act, act. Aries asks you to remember your personal fire, your reasons for being alive. It pumps up the volume on your life force. Its energy is raw, exhilarated, direct, rude, passionate, and looking for a challenge. Use your wisdom to focus this raw power and give it a goal. Aries is the cardinal fire sign whose fresh, brash enthusiasm is symbolized by a headstrong ram. It rules the head and imbues initiation, new beginnings, spontaneity, rebellion, and rebirth. Action. It's the action of the card. What action should you take? And it says, begin. Move into new territory. Cut to the chase, be a hero, feel the call to action and thoughtfully respond. Clear the air and clear the decks, be crisp and to the point, shoot from the hip, set healthy boundaries just by being vibrantly alive, express affection enthusiastically, spontaneously and passionately, work in short intense bursts rather than long periods of deep concentration. Aries activates our inner adolescent. Direct orders can set off knee-jerk rebellion. And that's true for pretty much any fire sign. Don't tell us what to do, ask nicely. Instead of telling others what to do or how they feel, express your own experience and opinions and speak in terms of I. Set a challenge and let others find their own answers. Make sure all sides feel heard. If a person feels torn between meeting their own needs and meeting another's, they will take care of their own needs first. And that's Aries energy too, take care, taking care of your own needs first. Um, so don't set it up as an either or situation when you're dealing with other people. Aries energy boils over quickly. If a situation threatens to erupt in conflict, get out, take a break and come back later. That's what Will Smith should have done. And that's all I'm gonna say about it. Challenge. I'm not going to read the challenge part, but I am going to read the gifting part. No, because that just talks about where you're located in the world. It talks about Aries being located, um, linked to spring. Um, I was going to say zodiac, zodiacally, but it's not. It's 
Aries was the first sign of the zodiac because that's when the rebirth and all of the spring happened. And so it's very much linked to spring, planting seeds, watering your garden, all of those things. Um, I'm going to move on. So I put some of the keywords from this reading on the screen there. Again, going back to how do we get rid of those self-defeating habits? If we just embody this Aries energy, Aries ain't got no time for self-defeating habits. They just don't exist in Aries' world. But Valerie, what about Aries and Mars, the god of war and the fire? The Aries that I know in my life, there's some violent people and they're always fighting and it's just so oh, disagreeable. Y'all, don't talk bad about Aries. I got the Mars card out too because it is ruled by Mars and Mars is known to be the god of war. And so what, what about all of that fiery not good feeling, anger and aggression. What about all of those energies? I am so glad you asked. This is a little aside, but anger. So again, we want to focus on, let me just go back. We want to focus on this, the new beginnings, the passion, the, the enthusiasm, the inner life flowing through us. We want to focus on that. But sometimes we get this, angry god of war coming up when that aries energy is called upon how does that tie in anger can lead you to your passion ask yourself not what am i angry about but why does it make me angry and it's almost always you are only going to be angry and set off about something that you care deeply about does it make you angry when someone disrespects your children? Hell yeah, I'm a mother. Does it make you angry when you see injustices in the world? Whatever those injustices may be, that's a clue as to what you personally are passionate about. Does it make, it ang does it make you angry when someone oversteps your boundaries that you have in place? And they ignore your boundaries or they encroach upon your personal time unnecessarily whatever that is. So that anger in the moment, if we don't act on that anger, but if we ask, why am I angry? We can easily flip it. It's two sides of the same coin. Flip it and say, oh, if I'm angry about this, it also shows me where my passion lies. And then we refocus those energies and our attention on what we are really passionate about. So don't get angry because there's a homeless man on the street. Get passionate about feeding the homeless. You see how that works? Anger doesn't serve you. Anger only serves to identify what you're passionate about. But staying in anger and acting in anger is, is a disservice to all involved. But when you can flip that coin and say, now I can direct my energies towards what I am passionate about, towards what I care about. That's the purpose of anger. So that's what I want to say about the fiery detrimental side of Aries. We can very quickly, if we are feeling called and moved towards that, because a lot of us are with these energies going on, if we find ourselves in anger more often than we usually are during this next two week period. Remember, you can pause and flip that coin over and ask yourself, how can I act? How can I act? towards my, how can I focus this energy towards my passion and get out of this angry feeling? So that's what I have about that. I don't know what video game this guy is from, but he fit, he fit what I needed for the slide. He looks like a video game character. Aww. But Valerie, you've talked all about these energies and you've talked about how I can switch those angry feelings into passion. But how do I actually step into this energy? And what area of my life would best benefit from some Aries fire? There's a blank screen because y'all have to wait. So let those ideas sit in the back of your mind. Um, I did that on purpose. I wanna leave you with those ideas. Those are the questions that we will cover and come back to when we get into activities and rituals that can help us pull these energies in and direct those energies towards the area of our life that will most benefit us. So that's what I have there.
And now I'm gonna turn it over to Robin for her portion. Uh, first of all, let me ask, are there any questions? I haven't been looking at the chat. I don't see any questions. Elizabeth mentioned that your discussion of Aries energy sounded to her like the fool. Mm, ready to jump. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. I said they both represent the beginning of the quest, starting out without knowing what constitutes quote unquote success. Is success that I achieve my goal or is success that I learned some useful things along the way about how to do things differently? Mm. Even if the actual goal is not how things came out. I like it. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of great, I'm gonna, I'm gonna review some of those comments while uh, Robin takes over. Okay. All right, so I, uh, I'll, I'll get going. And as always, if I freeze and you lose me, somebody should interrupt me and let me know. And feel free to put questions in the chat along the way. Valerie will collect those. Or when I stop for questions, you're welcome to unmute yourself. Um, OK, so I, I'm super excited about this energy. I have almost no Aries in my chart. And so I really need help from the Aries moon to channel these Aries, because I, I don't have any plants in Aries. Um, all right, so think a moment to yourself. And my question to you is, how does this sound? It's a 50 degree day at the beach and you run into the ocean, 45 degree water, chasing a tennis ball 30 times. Raise your hand if that sounds awesome. I wanna, on a 50 degree day, I wanna run into 45 degree water and chase a tennis ball 30 times. All right, with that in mind, I'm gonna start my screen because a big part of Aries energy is figuring out what lights you up as an individual. It's the ultimate energy of individualism. Can you guys see my screen here? Hopefully, yes. Hello? Yes, sorry. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's really about figuring out about what lights you up as an individual, your own passion. Aries energy is all about getting away from like what your parents said, what society says, what seems practical, you know, what worked for your mentor, you know, what they taught you in school. It's always about your inner self. And I, my husband took this picture at the beach on a walk last week. And that's exactly what these dogs were doing. It was 50 degrees out. The water temperature is about 45 degrees. And I watched them chase that tennis ball into the, into the sea and pull it back out 30 times. And I was like, they were loving it. They were having an amazing time. And I was like, I would freaking hate that. <laughs> I was having trouble just standing on the beach in the 50 degree day, you know, with my coat and my sweater and my hat and my jacket and my scarf and my boots. And, and it's like, they were just like fools for what they loved. And they were so excited. And, and, and of course, dogs can't throw their own ball, right? They need a human to do it. So they talked this guy into doing it and they were covering him with, with, uh, with water, but they were just so excited about what they were doing. And so that's what we really wanna think about with Aries energy, especially this particular moon. And I'll explain why this moon of all moons is, is even more this way. Just throw everything out for a moment. Everything you were told by anybody else about what you should be passionate about and really dig into your passion. So my husband had this great quote, which I decided to, uh, to present because it's so perfect for today. He said, a one size fits all approach is like saying that a potato sack is the ideal apparel because it fits over everyone's figure. You know, but in our society full of social media and YouTube videos and, and events like this, where Valerie has her take on Aries energy and I've got my take and there's plenty of, you know, experts, quote unquote, to listen to. It's really easy just to end up wearing a potato sack because it fits over everybody's figure or giving people potato sack advice because they're like, well, it's going to work. This is something we saw at the beach yesterday. Somebody put up this adorable sign and it basically has got like sticks and it's got old tennis balls and there's like a leash and it's the pet stop. So if you're walking your dog on the beach and you want something to throw for your dog, somebody put this thing up here where you can stop and get the perfect fetching stick. And I was like, this is so tailored for like exactly what a dog would want at the beach. So that's my inspiration for us here from a photo standpoint is the idea of really tailoring your own life so that it's what you love, what brings out your passion. What's that quest that you really want to go on? 
you know, glomming onto Valerie's questions about what areas of your life can benefit from Aries energy. Think about what areas of your life you kind of feel like you're wearing a potato sack because you're just doing what everybody said or taking a standard advice. How could you tailor that more to yourself? And of course, I could not resist the Marilyn Monroe wearing a potato sack picture, which is a famous picture taken of her in a potato sack. And there's various stories about how she got into this, but basically somebody said that she was wearing a terrible looking dress and she would look better wearing a potato sack. And the studio decided to do a whole, uh, a whole shoot about it, like a photo shoot. But I will point out that part of the reason she looks so good in this potato sack is that it is tailored to her. And that's really what we have to do. So how are we gonna use this Aries energy to light up our individuality, tailor our own life, bring out our own passion? All right, so tropically in the zodiac, the moon here is at 11 degrees Aries, but sidereally, that's not where it is in the sky. And the tropical zodiac was written down about 2000 years ago. It aligns the zodiac with the seasons. It's what most Western uh, astrology is based on. But because there's a wobble in the Earth's orbit, every um, 72 years, we lose one degree. So if you went outside and you actually were able to see the constellation behind the moon, you would actually see that it was 24 degrees behind this, and it's actually sidereally in Pisces. So I always like to use the tropical energy as our inner world, and then the sidereal energy shows us how that's going to manifest in our lives. So the questions you can ask yourself, right? What energizes your passion? And what do you do with it that creates positive emotion? And we're really looking at the link between doing what you love and then creating emotions that you'll enjoy along with that. So if I blow up this area of the zodiac, you can see that this moon and sun conjunction right here is in the um, term of Venus and it's in the decan of the sun. And then the sidereal actually in the sky turns out to be, there we go, turns out to be in Pisces and it's in the term of Mercury and the decan of the moon. So digging down, knowing that our Aries energy is, is, um, is um, uh, sort of influenced by Venus and the sun and our Pisces, our real world energy is influenced by Mercury and the moon can help us get a better idea of the sort of emotional or subtle tenor of how this energy is gonna show up in our lives. Venus is about joy, creativity, having fun, creating a good life for yourself. The sun is about energy, about light, about your spiritual path. Mercury is about communication and mental activities. And the moon is about creating um, something that fulfills your subconscious longing or your deep emotional energy. And there's actually some really special stuff going on with Mercury that we're gonna talk about in the ritual portion. So we can keep Mercury in our back pocket here. Mercury, by the way, just moved into Aries. It was in Pisces for a while, which is kind of harder on communication. So Mercury in Aries is great for thinking about what you really want in life and making that happen. All right, so in our inner world with our Aries energy, our Venus and our sun, the question to think about is what brings energy and joy into your unique experience? Now you might love hanging out with your family. You might love doing things with your kids. You might love your spiritual community. Thank you for showing up at a group event. But Aries is really about you as an individual. So separating you from all the people around you. What brings out your unique energy and joy? Energy is the sun here, joy is Venus. For me, it's dressing up and um, doing these photo shoots, even though I'm wearing like wildly impractical clothes that I would never wear in real life. And I can't walk more than a few feet in these crazy heels. For some reason, I just love dressing up and, and doing these photo shoots. So throw practicality out the window just for the moment. What brings out those great energies inside of you? And then what we're gonna look for in our outer results is connecting to your deep inner self and brainstorming about what's possible. You know, like for me, I can't live an entire day in these crazy heels with this, this crazy clothing. But how could I bring this energy more into my regular life? You know, maybe it's not a photo shoot. Maybe it's not three inch spike heels. But how can I feel more beautiful? How can I have more fun with clothing? How can I feel sexier and more joyful? Once you figure out what brings out that energy and joy, the Pisces energy can help you connect with your inner self, your divine connection, your higher self. And just think, how could I bring that out into my actual life here? Does anybody have any questions that they want to ask or anything they want to mention before I keep going? 
I'm not seeing anything in chat or hands. Okay, good. So I did my um, uh, elemental analysis here and Valerie is completely right, my friends, that the time of action has arrived. So we have a lot of stuff in fire signs, including the actual moon itself, which is in a fire sign because Aries is a fire sign. We're a little bit low on earth signs and water, but we've got a good amount of air signs as well because we have Mars and Saturn and Venus are all still in Aquarius and air signs. So that means that with our conjunction of fire and air, we are in the realm of inspired action. And I got to tell you, having done these for the last few events, we haven't been in the realm of action in a while. It's been a couple months since we really had a lot of fire in the zodiac. And I think that's good because those were times to feel. Those were times to be thinking about what we wanted. Those were times to be planning, to be looking at understanding ourselves. And I was so excited when I looked at this and I was like, man, it's finally time to do something about this. So what we're looking at here is thinking about what would really light you up and then harnessing your analysis and mental activities, that's the air sign portion, to empower actions that harness your passion. So I was talking to somebody the other day and she was like, oh, well, I have all these plans for what I could be doing, but none of them is practical. And the problem is that when you think that, you kind of create a self-fulfilling prophecy by never acting on your plans. But you're like, I've got all these ideas, but I never really do anything about them. And this is the time to do something about something. If you need help making it practical, email me and I will talk you through it. We'll figure out something. You know, talk to your dog, talk to your best friend, go inside, do a tarot reading, but find something where you're like, man, I know what I really want and I'm actually gonna take some action on it. And my ritual has more about that later, yeah. Okay, so that's the basic astrology analysis of what's going on here. It's time to act and it's time to take actions that are in congruence with your passion and with your deep inner self. And then when I get to the ritual portion, we're gonna be diving into some more of the conjunctions and the actual other planets that are involved in our full moon here. Anybody have any questions or thoughts so far? Nothing yet. Okay, you guys can see I'm, I'm really excited. I'm ready to actually do something. <laughs> okay, all right. So Valerie, you are back on. Back already? Woohoo! Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me get my screen back up. Why does it go away every time I close it down? One moment, please. Please stand by. First thing I want to say while I'm pulling this up is you all, I just put a link into the chat just a little while ago with a downloadable um, document. It's a PDF document. In that document, you will find some journal prompts that we will go over on screen, but that gives you an actual um, sheet that if you want to download it and print it out, you will have a place to journal. So. The question I left you all with, how do I step, how, how, how do I step into this energy? And what area of my life would best benefit from some Aries fire? So let's get into that. Yeah, I have to put blank screens into my presentation. Otherwise, I would just keep talking. So I put the blank screen to remind myself to stop talking. Aries energies, kiss those self-defeating habits goodbye. So how do I step into this energy? How decide? If I had to tell you how in one word, decide. Decide that this is how you want to live and then do so. It may not happen overnight. It probably won't happen overnight. That's the joy of being human. But you can build momentum. And each day you can strive to allow more opportunities where you act and pull in that Aries energy on your passions. So what area of my life would best benefit from deciding to act and pulling in these things. What area of my life, my career, my family life, which area? Answer, do y'all know what that word is? I bet some of y'all know what that word is. All of them, all of them, all of them. Um, all of the areas of your life would benefit, but we're human. We only have so many hours and so much focus and so much energy. So start with one area and let that energy grow and expand to the other areas. 
use the following exercises, which we're going to talk about, meditations and rituals to help identify where you should start. So let's get into a couple of exercises that you can use. And the first one is gonna be journaling prompts. I'm gonna read these. Again, it's available, downloadable, free download. Journaling prompts. Questions you can ask yourself to help identify ways that you can bring these energies into your life. What would I do with my life if there were no barriers to stop me? That's gonna help you identify where your passion lies. What areas or situations in my life do I wish I was the one in charge of? That's gonna help you identify where you might want to take a leadership role, that Aries energy in your life. What am I passionate about? What makes me angry? We talked about this before. And what clues does it give me as to what I'm passionate about? Am I tending to my fires? That's a good one. What flames need fanned and what fires need reignited? What have you let fall by the wayside? What did you say you were gonna put on the back burner, but instead it fell all the way off the stove and you haven't lit that in a long time? Now is the time to use these areas of energies to get that going again. Think of your biggest dream. What would it feel like to accomplish it? What would it feel like, keyword, to accomplish your biggest dream? And now take that and dream even bigger. Aries energy is going to help you stretch your goals, stretch your dreams, dream bigger, reach further in a way that makes it feel possible for a change. So if you are plagued with impossible dreams, now is the time to use this Aries energy to shift your perspective and start seeing those dreams and those goals as possible and not impossible. Think of a challenge because Aries don't take no shit. Aries, you're not going to tell Aries that anything is impossible. They're going to be like, watch me. So uh, the, the last one, think of a challenge in your life right now and ask yourself, what would Aries do? And write your response. I, li I really like that last one because any anything you come up on in the next lunation or within the next six months, if you want to go Aries new moon to Aries full moon, Ask yourself, how can I approach this situation, this challenge, this opportunity with Aries energy, leadership, fire, passion, action? How can I approach it with Aries energy? What would Aries do? And then write down your response. So these are some really cool journaling prompts that you can use over the next couple of weeks, or if you want to just incorporate them on the new moon um, to just really get yourself focused on how you can use these energies. The next thing I want to talk about is following your excitement act. There's that word again that Valerie just won't stop talking about. Following your excitement. This is uh, goes into the how. How do I pull this into my life? How do I do this? By following your excitement. Always do the thing that you find most exciting first. Following the excitement is actually the shortest, fastest, straightest, straightest path. And in this case, Bashar Dara Anka was talking about the um, path to your goals or the path to your manifestation. Setting new moon intentions is all about so that they can become real life manifestations. The shortest, fastest, straightest path to those manifestations is following your excitement. Excitement leads to synchronicities. And the synchronicities tell us what we're, that we're plugged into a higher field of consciousness and attraction. So it lets us know that we're on the right path. To pull in more Aries energy, just look for the next exciting thing you can take action on and do it. Following your excitement, follow your bliss. A lot of people say follow your bliss. Bliss is, bliss is one thing, but your excitement, that's different. Excitement has that fire energy in it. And following your excitement in every moment. I like to think of my days as segments. So when I wake up, that's a segment. When I start to move into my day by readying myself, showering, breakfast, that's a segment. When I start to work, that's a segment. So as I move into each segment throughout my day, if I pause at the beginning of that segment and ask myself, what's the most exciting thing I could be doing right now? 
eating my cereal without a spoon sounds hell of exciting. I'm going to do that. I don't know why, but I'm going to eat my cereal without a spoon this morning. And just ask yourself that because the divine, when you're connected, the divine is always giving you clues through your excitement, through your passion. And you don't know where it's going to lead you. That's half the fun of this glorious path. But when you follow your excitement, you can be sure that it's going to lead you down the path that is going to lead you to what you've been asking for. I cannot stress that enough. I could do a whole two hours just talking about following your excitement, how to do it, and all of the miraculous things that has happened to me when I have done it. So just try it for a day. Try it for a day and see where it leads you. If you can't do it for a day, try it for an hour. I promise you it's going to give you the most, what do I want to say, shift that you've experienced in a long time. And if you can do this during this new moon cycle, the shift is going to be even bigger and more impactful to you. So that's one of the biggest clues that I can have as we talk about this fiery, passionate energy. It's do this and see what results come. And I would love for you to give me some feedback on the results that come from this. Um, I do believe, yes, I'm going to say it one more time. Follow your excitement and act. I do believe that is my last slide. Is it? It is. I repeated them a couple of times. So that's what I have for you um, as far as that. Now, I will say on that, handout that I put it in the, the link in the chat. There's also a tarot spread on there. For those of you that like tarot, you can go ahead and pull cards for yourself and, and try to get some more clarity on how you can work with those energies by using that new moon in Aries tarot spread. And that's all I have as far as activities that you can use to work personally to identify where this shows up for you in your life. And now I'm going to turn it back over to the wonderful Robin. Thank you. Am I unmuted? I am. Okay, good. Sorry. All right. So that was awesome. I th I'm feeling the need to act. I don't know about you guys. Somehow, somehow I feel like the message is coming through in the ether to act. Um, so I want to just talk about a couple of things that can happen with Aries energy before I get to my ritual, um, which is super cool. I love those journaling prompts though. I'm definitely going to meditate on those. I thought that was really super cool. And I want to invite anybody who is thinking that there's an action that they might want to take to put that in the chat. I'm going to put my action in the chat right now, which is get serious about publishing my book. So I'm putting this here and with my intention that this chat is now a sacred space for us to put the intentions that we plan to act on. So if you're feeling brave and you want a little accountability, put your intention in the, in, put, your, put your action intention in the chat. And what I want to say is that, you know, I love Aries energy and we're really excited about Aries energy and, it, and it's super necessary here. But there are a lot of messages out there that say that Aries energy is selfish. That say that, well, if you do your own thing, you're not going to be accepted or you're not going to fit in, right? Our school system is very Capricorn because there's a lot of rules to follow. It's very Libra because it's all about building a good relationship with your teacher and your classmate. It is not very Aries. And the Aries kids are the ones who are labeled as disruptive because they refuse to sit down and they have too much energy and all kinds of stuff. So as much as we love Aries energy and, and we're excited about acting, there may be parts of our inner self that are not feeling so excited. And if you start taking these Aries actions, there may be parts of you who are like, wait a second, I thought we weren't gonna finish the website. We can't put ourselves out there in front of everybody. Wait a second, you can't publish that book. That's on a spiritual topic and yours is a scientific family. What's your family gonna say when they find out that you're like a spiritual woo-woo person? Wait a second, I can't be honest with, with my partner about how I really feel about this because I have to be the perfect wife or else my partner's never gonna accept me. Like those little parts of you that are like, I don't think it's entirely safe to be my authentic self. And there's a reason I haven't done it over the 49 years or whatever of your life. And so it's really important to just take time with the parts of you that might be scared or might be concerned about what somebody else is gonna say to listen to that, to journal about that, to give your inner self a hug, to remind your inner self that you're not five surrounded by giant grownups who have the power to punish you if you don't obey. Right, bring those parts with you along and, and usher them into the delightful experience of being a grown up and getting to figure out your own life. 
take away you know messages that tell you that you're not able to do things and that conformity is, is is the most important thing and really bring your whole self into the aries energy don't just like force yourself through it and then steamroller things and then discover that part of you doesn't want to go to bed tomorrow that's my my quick tip for that um i will also mention that i'm working on i'm i'm teaching a class in a couple of days about um uh, lessons from working with spirit and this is a big thing for spirit is bringing out these authentic self sorts of energies and then healing anything that is comes up as a result of that does anybody have any questions or thoughts that they want to say about how they felt about aries energies or, or any response to what i said you got a ton of responses for what you said i am feeling <laughs> this aries energy so much do you want me to read some of them so much uh yeah, I can see that I can see the chat here because I'm not sharing my screen yet. But wow, these look amazing, you guys. Follow up, solo trip to Arizona. Gosh, this is so exciting. Okay, that's amazing. Wow. Okay. All right. I'm really excited. You guys, to I just want to say, y'all are going to do it. Y'all are going <laughs> to do it. It's going to happen. I feel it. Mm. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. All right. So. With any luck, my ritual might help you guys with some of these energy and ideas. I shall share here. This is what came to me. So let's start with our sweet spot analysis. So I thought I would do a sweet spot analysis to try to get us in, in the airy zone, right? So I have my two axes here. My horizontal axis is passion. I've got passion on the left, high passion on the right. And then my vertical axis is action. I hope you can see from what Valerie and I have said how action and passion are major Aries qualities. In part, I picked passion because it's also got the overlap with the Pisces quality. So let's see which of you guys, which of these, these zones you identify with. And you can put this number where you find yourself in the chat when it comes up. And then we'll see what we can do to get ourselves into the sweet spot. So if you find yourself doing the minimum, then you probably are stuck in a low passion, low action zone. You get up, you brush your teeth, you go to work if you have to, you know, you pay the bills, you get groceries, you make dinner, but you're not really living a full and exciting life. So if you feel like this is kind of where you've been, where you are generally, or where you've been the last few days, you can put a one in the chat, doing the minimum, low action, low passion. Okay, maybe, and this is where I have been, maybe you find yourself with many exciting plans, but they go unfulfilled. You have all these ideas and you got all this raw material and you have all this inspiration and maybe you have a bunch of notes, you know, or maybe you've done a bunch of research, but you're not actually acting on it. So this is the high passion, a little bit better, but you're still in the low action zone. So if you've been making plans, but not acting on them, put a two in the chat and somebody can put a two in the chat with my name next to it because that's where I've been for sure. All right, you might be in this zone. This is, I titled this uh, humorously, a fool for duty. This is when you're doing a lot and you're going beyond the minimum. You know, maybe you're helping people, maybe you're going above and beyond at work, maybe you're serving your family, but you're not that excited about it. You're doing what you need to do and even more than you need to do, but somehow it's just not lighting that inner fire. And if you're somebody who has a lot of messages that say you should serve others or you have to help everybody who needs help, it's easy to find yourself in this zone. And it can, it can be exhausting. It leads to burnout typically because you're not passionate about what you're doing. So I bet you're all wondering what the, the fourth zone is. If you're in three, stick a three in the chat. The fourth zone I entitled simply doing what you love, right? Doing is the action and then love is the passion. Instead of doing the minimum, you're actually doing what you love. And that leads to the right amount of action because we also live in a society that tells us we should always be productive and that the more productive we are, the more valuable we are. But when you're doing what you love, your body and your psyche will naturally tell you when it's time to rest because you're not trying to find value from just producing more and more like, like number three. But your love for it will say, you know, I've loved doing this for a couple hours, but now it's time to stop. Or now I need to take a break and cook dinner or whatever it is. So you stick a four in the chat if that's where you wanna be. If you're like, this really looks good to me. I would love to be the transformation zone doing what I love. And somebody can put Robin four because that's, that's really what this presentation has inspired me to do. 
So does anybody have any questions or thoughts about this before I head on? Okay. There so was a, a question, I think it was kind yeah. of a joke, but um, asking, can you be in more than one? And I would <laughs> say yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's what psychologists call a mixed state. The mixed state is when you're in more than one for sure. Yeah, I mean, you could be in exciting plans, unfulfilled when it comes to yourself, and then you can be in the fool for duty zone when it comes to your family, right? All your energy goes into serving them, but you never actually act on what you want to do. Yeah, that's a that's an astute observation for sure. Um, these sweet spot analyses are really cool. I feel like they help me clarify where I am and then where I want to go a lot. Okay, so if we look at our astrology, I promised a deep dive here. So this is our, our uh, new moon in Aries right over here. And we have what's called a biquintile from Pluto in Capricorn, which is these yellow lines. Here's Pluto. Pluto's helpfully the P, so that's easy. And it goes, no, this is a quintile. It's not a biquintile. Sorry, it's a quintile. That was a typo. Um, anyway, so it goes, it's the yellow lines that go over from the Pluto to our moon here. And um, a bike, oh, sorry, a quintile is an aspect in astrology that is an aspect of like talent and creativity. It's kind of thinking out of the box. It's that sort of thing that you're just unaccountably good at. Even other people are like, man, that's so hard. How are you so good at that? And you're like, I don't really know. It just kind of is easy for me. So if you have those hidden talents, you probably have some quintiles in your chart. And Pluto is a planet of transformation. Capricorn is a sign of long-term success. So this, this quintile is helping us not just ram things down the door. Aries is the ram and it can be a little bit percussive, but try to use a creative approach to the, uh, the changes and the action that you want to make here. All right. We also have something super exciting. It's not quite in this chart because it's the day after the full moon. Mercury is going to be Kazemi. And Kazemi is a, uh, an astrology term that describes a planet that is within 17 minutes. That's that's a half a degree of the actual sun. And whatever the planet's superpower is, like Mercury's about um, mental analysis and communication, whatever that is, it gets supercharged. So the day after the full moon, Mercury is going to be Kazemi, which means this is a great time to figure out anything that you've been trying to think about, analyze, discover, uncover, discuss, communicate. This is a great time to do that on the very day of April 2nd. And then the other thing we've got here is you might notice there's just a whole bunch of stuff next to the sun and moon. So this is Mercury here, which is the one with the little horns on it. I think of them as antennae because Mercury is all about communication. But we also have Chiron, which is this asteroid that looks like a key. And then we have the asteroid Pallas, which is the square on top of a cross. Chiron is your inner pain, your old wound, your childhood trauma, which becomes a source of wisdom in life. And palace is about having a shield mate, being a partner, somebody who has your back in the fight, not necessarily a romantic partner, although it could be, but really somebody who fights the fight with you. So I entitled this conjunction, pain is your partner to mine for insights. A lot of us avoid pain and Aries often involves pain. Partly I have Chiron in Aries in my chart, so that's very true for me. But also because as I've said, a lot of times Aries energy doesn't get encouraged in our conformist rule bound society and school system. And so a lot of us, when it comes to doing what we really want, we have a lot of voices that say things like, well, that's selfish or that's not practical or you don't care what anybody else thinks or you're just gonna mess it up because you're not planning. And so I'm really encouraging us because we have our Chiron conjunction here to not shy away from the pain. Don't avoid it. Really dive into it, not for hours and hours and days, but just ask yourself, like, what is that painful message? Is that painful message, you're being disruptive, you should sit down and stop bothering the class. And if that's your Aries pain, you might think, you know, how could I reframe that? How could I say, okay, I can see why that was hard for my teacher when there were 30 kindergartners, but I'm not a kindergartner anymore. I don't still have to feel like I'm disrupting the class. I can spend time on my own meditating or journaling or talking to a trusted friend and figure out what I really want. I don't have to sit down and behave just to make it easy for others anymore. Like where is that pain moment and how can it help you have insight for what you really want for yourself? 
Okay, any questions about the astrology before I get to the ritual? I am not seeing any questions. Feel free to raise your hand if, if I missed it. I'm not seeing anything. Great. All right, and I want you to keep in mind this, uh, this title here. What do I really want for myself? Because a lot of times the things that we think we want are things that we are conditioned are important. Like, well, I want a good job so I can always pay my rent. Or um, I want a, a house with a picket fence and a dog because that's what mom and dad said I always needed. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a job and that paying the rent's not important. And if you want a house, I would say go for it. But it's very easy for that, those first layer of desires to be things that we were kind of told is what we were supposed to want. And so this is about, Aries is about what you really want. What's your real energy? What's your real gift? What's your real desire for your quest? All right, so I titled this ritual, Finding the Fire Inside Your Game of Life. And the first thing we're gonna do is work with this Mercury Kazemi and ask your higher self or your divine connection, but since it's Aries, it would really go for your higher self for insight and analysis. This was a quote from William Lilly. All authors do hold a planet in Kazemi to be fortified thereby. William Lilly wrote Christian astrology and it was the first astrology book in English published in 1647. So just in case you think I made this Kazemi thing up, at least since 1647, people have been thinking that this was important and powerful. So once you ask your higher self for insight and analysis on what you really want, ask yourself if your life were a game what would you want to play? What game sounds like a, a good game for you? Aries is associated with games because games are about risk. They're about starting without knowing what the ending is gonna be. They're about sort of an escape from practical reality, the thrill of the gamble. And this is where this creativity is gonna come in because we had a quintile. I didn't wanna do just a straight ritual. I wanted to give it a creative spin. If your life were a game, what would you want to play? So everybody just take a moment you can put your hand on your heart, deep breath, connect with your inner self and just see if anything comes up for you. If you wanna put it in the chat, you're welcome to. I wanted a picture of games for this slide. So I went to our game closet and I thought it was so ironic and funny, the games that I found. We have Flux, Star Flux, Monty Python Flux, and Martian Flux. And then we have Gloom and Paranoia. <laughs> and this bottom game, which you can't really see, is a game called Coup, where you overthrow the government. <laughs> and I was like, boy, we have a lot of Aries games <laughs> paranoia, overthrowing the government, gloom. I'm like, wow, There's a, this tells us a lot about our, our organization. Do we have any comments in the chat, Valerie, about any games that came to people? The, the game Clue immediately came to mind. Right, yeah. Um, trying to figure so things out. I immediately thought of Candyland just because oh, I don't want yeah. to be hungry. Right. Well, well, this is my point, right? Take this as a sign of what your subconscious had to say to you. Candyland. I want fun, beauty, joy. I want life to be right. clue. I got something I got to figure out. There's a mystery I don't understand. There are hidden forces in my life that I need to uncover. We want to take these, these sort of like off the top of the chart, you know, um, responses and figure out what's the, what's the message for myself. Okay, so now that you've thought about that, here's my ritual. All right, so what I did is I picked six games and I gave them each a little bit of like a description. One, Monopoly, fun with stuff, like material items. Two, dress up, find your identity. Three, playing house, feather your nest. Four, playing poker, the thrill of the gamble. 
Five, the game of life, build your relationships. And six, playing cars, exploring your journey. And then I assigned each of them to a tarot card. Although you could certainly use Oracle cards or you could use crystals or whatever you wanna do. And honestly, you're welcome to take a screenshot here and use my list, or if you would like, you can make your own list of games. Okay, so I just, these are the six games that came to me. I have six cards, one for each of them. And then you can see I've got a dice. My husband's a huge D&D player, so our house is swimming, <laughs> swimming in dice. I just went and grabbed one. Okay, and then the next thing you do is roll the dice and then turn over that card. So I rolled a six and then that, this was the sixth card down here. So I've decided that my Aries action is going to be to do something that explores my journey, which means I may actually have to drive someplace. I think I might take the car apart literally and maybe drive somewhere I've never been before. And the funny thing is that I looked up the meaning of seven of swords because I wanted, I mean, I have a meaning for myself, but I wanted to look up some of what other authors thought. And this is the meaning that came up. You have to decide what you really want. I've used the creative tarot by Jessica Crispin. You have to decide what you really want. And I was laughing so hard because of course that's the title. Remember that I gave the astrology chart, decide what you really want. And I was like, thank you spirit for doubling down on this with me and just hammering the message in a little harder, right? I looked at the seven of swords and I thought I need to make sure that I can be selfish in a healthy way because this is the sword the guy's like stealing, right? I've got to figure out how I can do something for myself here. So that's what I've got to figure out is what action am I gonna take that will stretch my comfort zone so that I can be my own perfect partner here? right? We're channeling that palace and Chiron. Chiron, stretching your comfort zone is going to be a little bit painful. Palace is me being my partner. So what I'm going to do when the moon comes up the, on April 1st is meditate and ask the Kazemi and Mercury, help me figure out what action I can take that feels a little bit selfish. That's out of my comfort zone that I can drive somewhere to explore something new as just a way of getting out of the house, doing something creative and playful. And then when I get there, I'm gonna ask my higher self, what is the message for me? What am I gonna do with these Aries energies? I already said in the chat, I wanted to work on my book. So I think I'll be asking about that. What kind of advice do I need to really enjoy my book? Part of the reason I haven't done it is I'm always like, well, what if people don't like it? What if it's not popular? What if I put all this effort in and nobody reads it? And I think I need some help like working through those fears. Like Valerie said, just, you know, Aries is like taking the action for its own sake, not worried about what other people are gonna think or say. So that is the ritual. You got your six cards, you roll the dice and then you figure out what game is that and what action am I gonna take? And I felt proud of putting it in action because of course it's Aries, so it has to be an action. But then when Valerie said act so much, I was like, I have actions in mind too. So, all right. Any thoughts or questions about this? What do you guys think of this ritual? I, want, I didn't want to make it too complicated, but I wanted to do something kind of fun and out of the ordinary. I have some curiosities that aren't necessarily mine. Um, I've, I love how you were able to um, take the game and relate it to like what it might mean for you. Yeah, And so I was wondering if you could do that for some of the uh, game names that were put over into chat. Yeah, absolutely. And so, I'll mention, by the way, anybody who wants to email me, my email's at the bottom here, robin at poolmx, my website, spiritsaid.com, and you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at spiritsaidstyle. And you're welcome, by the way, to take a picture of this, um, or if you email me, I will email you the slide. But yeah, I would, I'd be happy to opine on people's games. Okay, so I'm going to give you three of them and you can take them um, one at a time. Okay. Trouble, go fish, and sorry. Okay. So the first thing I would say is I can, I can you know, give you my thoughts on these guys. But the first thing to do is to, is to write it down, right? In fact, I'm going to write it down right now because I'm not so great at remembering stuff. Write down the game that came to you. Trouble, go fish. 
And spend a little time, maybe while you're journaling on one or more of Val's amazing prompts, and ask yourself, what seemed fun about that game? What, what about, you know, imagine yourself playing the game and think and, and ask, what seemed fun about that? Why did my psyche come up with that game? My first thought is that the game, and I don't know so much about the game of trouble, but trouble, I think, oh gosh, is that, I'm thinking of mousetrap. Trouble's the one with the popper thing in the middle of the thing, mm -hmm. in the middle of the board. And that was is another that comment, the pop matic games. Yeah. So my hunch about those games, about the trouble game, is that there's something about the excitement of not knowing what's going to happen, right? The thrill of having your adrenaline up and being like, oh, no, I'm going to push it, and, and we don't know what's going to happen. And is trouble one of those games where the other um, players cause problems for each other? Yes. Yeah, and sorry is also that game. And there may be some aspect there that's like, I don't want to have to be so careful and tiptoe around everybody else. I want to be able to do what I want to do. I want to throw a stone in the river and make ripples. I don't want to have to feel like I have to walk on tiptoes around everybody to, you know, make sure that they don't get discomfited. That's very airy sort of energy. Does that resonate at all? Uh, for me, I was thinking, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not like chess or checkers, but in my mind, it felt strategic. It felt like uh, you had to plan your moves the right way. And if you were smarter than the other person, then, and you moved your chips a certain way, then you could get around the circle and get home before they knocked you out of the way. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. How I always envisioned it in my head. <laughs> yeah. So I think there's a personal power aspect to that. I want to be the powerful one. I want to be the one who figures things out. I want to feel like life isn't just happening to me, but if I can figure things out and get it all right and have the right strategy, I could be successful instead of feeling like there are forces in my larger world that are arrayed against me or that I'm sort of like, you know, always responding to what other people or other forces are doing. How about that? Yeah. I always, yeah, I always feel like that's something that's, that's growing in you is your personal power and your ability not to feel like the little mouse scurrying around avoiding all the elephants, but the desire to be an elephant yourself with equal value for everybody else. Should I opine on these other ones or does, does whoever said go fish want to actually ask? Hi, it's me, Tara. How are you? Great. <laughs> I like to have fun. It's, uh, you know, you I like the whole conversation on action and spontaneity, being spontaneous. I'm not as much about that type of person from Virgo. So, you know, um, so I just thought of that. I was like, when you were talking about the die and that was right about that time and playing a game, I was like, oh, yeah, go grab something and do something. And that's how I <laughs> Yeah, grabbing something is a very Aries action to take. And especially the whole go fish where you're like grabbing and you have no idea like what's on the other side. And I have three planets in Virgo, including my son. And Virgos are notoriously like cautious, planners, hard on themselves when it doesn't go well. So I would say that there's a sense of you that's that's excited about maybe giving yourself a little more freedom because there's a, there's a classic Virgo challenge, which is that Virgos have a plan. We execute our plan in great detail. And then we consider the plan a failure if the result is not exactly what we thought it was going to be. And part of what we can learn from Aries energy is realizing that it's like a little kid. You know, little kids fall down a lot before they finally learn to walk. Well, did they fail every time they fell before they walked? It's like, no, because they learned what wasn't working. They learned how to get their balance better. Or like my little sister had a really tough lesson apparently that involved hitting her head on the corner of the coffee table. And that set her back six weeks, but she did successfully learn to work, walk. And now she's a doctor and she walks every day all the time and even goes running. So that 
what the, the thing to learn from that Virgo energy is even if that card isn't the card you wanted, well, you now know a little bit more about what's in your opponent's hand and you might be able to make use of this card later. And so it's expanding your definition of what constitutes success. I was successful because I pulled a damn card and learned something, even if it wasn't the card I was looking for. Does that work for you? Thank you. Uh -huh. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Does the person who said sorry want to ask? I always thought sorry was funny because it's like, you're not really sorry. <laughs> it's the game of how to fake it emotionally. <laughs> I think there were a couple of people that said sorry, so. Yeah, that's the thing about sorry is it's like, there's this delight in like messing with people. And I think that this is something that's important you know, for us as a society is learning how to tease each other in a way that isn't hurtful. And to be able, yeah, to be able to, to say, oh, you lost the game because of you, but I still love you and you still love me and we don't have hard feelings against each other. And some families, especially, and some people have the messages that's like, well, if you piss off mom and dad too much, that's gonna be the end of it. And the fears of being abandoned or of not being loved if you show your true self. And one of the, the high things, the high, high expressions of Aries is the faith that somebody will love you out there. You can be yourself and there will be somebody who thinks that you are awesome and that it's not worth hiding you, yourself or conforming or being playing small just to make sure you're loved by the people who happen to be around you in the moment. And so I think that sorry has that component of saying, you know what, I'm just gonna play the way I wanna play. And we're playing a game that involves messing with other players but we can still be loved. We can still be accepted even if we've caused mischief or made life difficult. Yeah, like Elizabeth said, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> cool, great. Well, I'm glad you guys like this game idea that, that came to me at the last minute. So it was good. All right, anybody else wanna say anything or ask anything? Awesome. Yep. You got through that in record time, you guys. Yeah. Okay, so has everybody is committed to taking action, right? Right? Yeah, let me see some head nods. Okay, okay. If you don't know what to take action on, please don't overthink this. Please don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Take action on anything. Go back to that, whatever excites you. Any, just do anything just to get the ball rolling, to get this, oh, I can do that. Yay, I see so many head nods. I'm so happy. I love fire energy, y'all. Can y'all tell? I love it. I love it. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's um I think we'll we'll wrap up on this event, but I'm glad you all are still here because Robin, I want you to talk about what you have coming up just this week. Thank you. So this week, um, I have on Thursday at it's 5 p.m. Pacific which is 8 p.m. Eastern, I am teaching a class called um, Lessons from Spirit. And it's basically what I have learned from talking to spirit for the last six years during my spiritual awakening. I was in a Christian church for 20 years before that. And then I actually started hearing from spirit and I have learned so much. There's like so many things that I thought that were totally wrong. I thought that spirit was supposed to rescue me. I thought that spirit knew everything and it was gonna tell me what to do. And then I wouldn't have to mess up my life anymore because spirit would take over my life. I felt guilty about being angry. I thought I had to be a good girl and not be honest. I didn't know I could swear when I talked to spirit when I was really mad. Like there's just all these things. And people ask questions all the time. Like why is spirit so hard on me? Why can't I hear from spirit the way that I, that I want to? And, um, and I just have a lot of answers that I've gotten from that. And so I'm putting the link in the chat there. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's nice of you. And at the same time. <laughs> free meetup class. And I'm, I'm going to have, I have to tell you guys that I have ideas for like 25 slides. Like there's a cascade of ideas. And actually, I think I'm going to turn this into a book. This is the book I was mentioning in the chat because I now have much too much content for a single class, but we're going to be talking about things like, you know, why does spirit tell some people that they should do whatever they want and other people that they should listen more? Like how does spirit balance you out? And yes, I think my ancestors are definitely going to be there. We're not talking about ways you can hear from spirit more. What do you do when spirit disappoints you? 
what does spirit say about anger? What does spirit say about honesty? What does spirit say about getting along with other people? Um, and I'm going to give a bunch of like do's and don'ts. And it's not like this is, you know, absolute truth for everybody. This is my experience and then the experience of working with lots of clients. But I hope that it's going to help you guys to be thought provoking about your own relationship with spirit, either because you agree with me or because you're like, she's totally wrong about that. And then you go off and use your Aries energy to do your own thing. Okay. So that's coming up. And then there's also another class for Awkwardly Zen on April 10th about Lenormand cards. So if you've ever wanted to know what are Lenormand cards, how are they different from tarot? How do I use them? Why would I use them as opposed to picking up my tarot deck? Nicole and I are going to team teach a class on that. Yay. So yeah, I'd love to see you guys all there. I'm super excited about this class. I'm going public with a lot of things in my relationship with spirit that are kind of scary for me to talk about, but I'm really trying to channel this Aries energy and like put myself out there and be honest and go past the, oh, angels are so amazing because <laughs> they are, but sometimes they just, they don't give you the answers that you want. And then how can we have a great relationship with spirit? really getting to know who spirit is instead of just saying, I want a safer, easier life. Like, so please tell me what to do so I don't have to take responsibility for myself. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing too, is that if you have questions, obviously there'll be time for that there. And I do want to incorporate the questions into my book because the goal is to find out where are people struggling in their relationship with spirit and what kind of help do people need with that? Cool. Yeah. Well, I hope you all show up. The links are in chat for that, that upcoming event and you can follow that link to find the other event on April 10th. And if y'all can hang with me, cause I know uh, we didn't go the whole two hours. So I have some questions for y'all, but first let me quickly um, go over what's coming up for Tarot Unicorns and Coffee. Wednesday morning, as always on Wednesday mornings, we have our group meditation, which I have, which has a special place in my heart now. I really like the Wednesday group meditations and that is happening tomorrow morning. You can find that same place you found this event. Um, Thursday, we have energy healing. That's where I channel and we do some energy work. Um, that is on Thursday morning-ish, I believe it's 11. And April 2nd, which is this weekend. I am so excited. Lemurian crystals, we're going about that. Listen, if you're like, and crystals is not my thing, I'm gonna make it y'all thing if y'all come to this event. It's gonna be so cool. It's not just your normal. And this crystal is for this crystal. We're gonna really look at the structure of the crystals and some things that you may have not noticed in your own crystals. Um, so I hope you all come to that event, Lemurian crystals. And of course, we'll talk about Lemurian crystals specifically and the Lemurian story. Like why are they called that? What is the Lemurian civilization? So all of that is happening on the second. And aside from that, um, now that we've covered everything that's coming up, now I have a question for the group. Feel free to email your response if you feel more comfortable. You can put it in chat or you can just raise your hand and let us know. Uh, Robin and I would like to know, we would like some feedback on these moon events. What aspects of these moon events do you love the most that you would like to see us continue doing? Is there anything that you haven't seen us do that you would like us to add in? Elizabeth, go for it. I love the zodiac or the horoscope, the horoscope. Okay. So you want me to 